Are you thinking about playing D&D or some other role-playing game like Pathfinder, Starfinder, Call of Cthulhu, or similar? You might be confused by all the trappings of such a game. For instance, there's a special important-sounding title for one of the players like Game Master or Dungeon Master. Depending on what you've read online, you might think that this special player is supposed to know all the rules, craft their own fantasy world, invent complex stories, and guide other players through an experience that will change their lives. I promise you that's misinformation. Playing a tabletop RPG is basically like playing a board game. I can prove it, and it shouldn't cause you any more anxiety or confusion than getting together with friends for a friendly chat over coffee. Here's how to run an RPG for the first time in your life in three easy steps. 1. Build the board. Grab a napkin, scrap a paper, draw five shapes on it. This is the board of the board game part of your RPG. Each shape represents a room, like in Clue or Cluedo. Connect the rooms with lines. These are hallways. You've designed what's colloquially called a dungeon, but it doesn't have to be a literal dungeon. You can imagine it's a space station if you want to play a science fiction game, or imagine it's a castle, or a haunted house, or a school for witches, or a creepy hospital. As Game Master, you get to decide on the setting, so think of a setting that appeals to you and jot that down on your dungeon map. If you just can't think of any ideas, then just use where you work or where you live. Draw a literal map of something that you're familiar with in real life and call it that location overrun by zombies. While you're thinking about your setting, populate it with some interesting things. For instance, maybe it's got some antique furniture or high-tech control panels or medieval torture devices. Maybe there are evil space marines roaming the halls or scientists at work or androids or ghosts, zombies, or skeleton. Be sure to populate the first room with useful gear so player characters starting the game can grab a sword or laser gun or whatever is appropriate for your setting on their way in. It's admittedly a little strange to have to create your own board for your game. After all, when you buy Monopoly, it comes with a board. You don't have to draw it on a napkin. For many game masters, creating the board is part of the fun, but sharing is also part of the fun, and lots of people have shared their dungeons online. You can download a $0 one-page dungeon from DungeonContest.com and use it in future games. Step 2. Establish a rule. The dirty secret of tabletop role-playing games that nobody wants you to know about is that they're all basically the same. The main game mechanic is rolling dice and declaring success or failure based on what you've rolled. Everything else is decorative. For your first game, you can play with exactly that one rule. You have to come up with some parameters, and what that is is up to you, but I'll suggest this one. If you roll a 5 or 6 on a 6-sided die, then you succeed. Use that rule for everything. When a player wants to force open a locked door, the player rolls a six-sided die, a, a d6, and succeeds on a roll of five or six. When a player attacks a zombie, the player rolls a d6 and succeeds on a five or six, dealing one point of damage. How many hits does it take to kill a zombie? You decide you're the game master. How many hits does it take for a zombie to kill a player? Well, your game only has one rule, so when a player is hit, the player rolls a d6 and survives on a roll of 5 or 6. Should a player character die, you could allow another player to attempt to revive them. You know the rule. Should a player character die and fail to be revived, then the player, the actual player, just invents a new character and joins the game at full health, just like in a video game. This is the way of the RPG. You don't worry about rules, you make rulings. Step 3. Gather friends and play. Gather some friends, tell them up front. You've never run an RPG game before, but you've decided to try. Tell them to invent a character for the setting you've prepared. The process of inventing a character for your game is exactly one step. Give your character a name. Now start playing. Here's what you do. First, tell the players where their characters are and what they see around them. Second, listen to the players when they tell you what they want to do. Third, tell the players the outcome based on either common sense or on the roll of a d6 of their actions. This is a loop, so just cycle through these steps. Tell the players, listen to the players, tell the players the outcome, until the players get from room one to room five. Trust the system. This is how it's done. 
With five rooms, you can reasonably aim for about a two hour game. It's okay if it's shorter though. The map was the board, and this is the role playing part of the role playing game. Players must interpret the game world as if it were real. What'll happen if they mix those two magical liquids together? Nobody knows because magic's not real, but in the game world we pretend like it is and we take precautions as if there were real consequences to our actions. As the game master, you roleplay by treating the world as a simulation. In real life, you don't have to declare when gravity is in effect and when it's not because it's just always on. In the game world though, it's up to you as Game Master when effects take place. And the other characters on the board, the ones that players aren't playing, must act and react as if they had goals and motivations of their own, even if it's just to eat brains. There's a, a lot of role play here and none of it involves dressing up, speaking with a different voice, or putting on funny accents, I promise. You're a Game Master now. Can it really be so easy? It really is this easy. I've started people with this system several times and it always results in a fun time. But what about the story? You don't need a story. The story develops as you play. If you really want a story in your game, have it happen around your player characters. For instance, maybe the player characters hear through a, a thin wall some people on the other side discussing an imminent ritual to cast an evil spell uh, over the land. Well, the player characters may want to stop that from happening, or they may not care. It's not your place to tell the other players what to think of world events. It's your job to set up the game board, which you've done, and make rulings, which you're doing. As you play, a story forms around the player's actions. It might be a straightforward story of a group of adventurers who dash through a dungeon, killing monsters and grabbing treasure. It might be a comical story of a group of adventurers who accidentally push each other into pit traps while trying to persuade a mindless zombie to give them that fancy golden ring lodged onto one of its exposed ribs. Or maybe it's about adventurers who overhear a plot to destroy a nearby town and heroically foil the plan. Whatever the story ends up being, it's a lot of fun watching it unfold. But I really wanted to play official D&D &D out of the book. You can do that, and it's a lot of fun, but I have a different video for that. I'm of the opinion that it's wiser to start with an overtly simple system, like the one I've described in this video, rather than with a relatively complex system like D&D. &D. Starting out with a game that literally has one rule means you get to experience and learn the rhythm and flow of running an RPG while focusing on playing and having fun. You can run D&D &D or some other system next time once you're comfortable with talking to a group of players and keeping a game running for, for from start to finish within an allotted amount of time, like two hours. Some of the best tabletop RPG experiences I've had have been with zero dollar games like Dungeon Raiders and Dungeon Delvers links in the description. They also have the advantage of being really simple systems, so there aren't many rules to learn. One rule seems pretty basic. My one rule system helps you understand how rules are built and why they both do and don't matter. Rules don't matter because you can obviously play a very fun RPG with literally one rule. You can get through at least a two-hour game by making it on-the-spot rulings only as needed, and in a pinch, nearly anything can be decided by a die roll. Rules are significant because no matter what, they start to accumulate on their own. In your game, a player will do something unexpected, I guarantee it, like buckle a sleeping giant's bootstraps together. When the giant awakens, it trips over its own feet and falls prone. Your players suggest to you that they ought to have a better chance of hitting the giant because it's lying more or less helpless on the ground. So you decide that rolls of four, five, and six are successful in this case. Then later, one of your players slips on an oil slick trap and falls prone just as a reanimated skeleton attacks. That player is prone, just like the giant. It only makes sense that the same rule that applied to the giant also applies to the player, so the skeleton hits on a four, five, or six. And, and when that player strips the chainmail off the skeleton they've just defeated, you realize that there should be some way to reflect that the player is now in armor. You decide that enemies hit a player in armor only on a roll of six. Or maybe you decide that rolls of five damage the armor and only rolls of six damage the player. How much damage can armor take? You decide you're the game master. 
Rules provide consistency. It's often easier to go to the trouble of learning rules when you understand their purpose. So spend some time with a simple rule, reap what you sow, and then graduate to something that's already figured out the details for you. But just as you didn't know the extent of your own rules until they actually came up in the game, you don't need to learn every D&D rule all at once. You can learn it as you play with your friends. I hope this video has helped. Go play an RPG.